I uh, just got another video I want to react to here with uh, Pierre Polyev and Justin Trudeau having a back and forth in uh, the House of Commons uh, during question period. So like usual, we'll have a listen and then uh, we'll break it down after. It's not just common sense conservatives who are saying that the Prime Minister's latest tax hike on small businesses, farmers, home builders, and health care is not worth the cost. Now, former Liberal Treasury Board President Scott Bryson says wow. the Prime Minister's support for the tax hike is a combination of moral sanctimony and economic complacency for ministers who simply do what PMO tells them. He calls it socialist baffle gap. Why is the Prime Minister going ahead with killing jobs and raising costs with what his own liberals call socialist baffle gap. And despite the conservative leader's partisan attacks, uh, the, uh, high, the uh, raise on capital gains inclusion rates is very simple. It's not partisanship for me. It's his own former liberal treasury board president who calls it socialist ba baffle gap. In fact, the tax begins applying on the very first dollar that a small business earns. And, you know, he's been promising that raising taxes would make life fair. We find out today from the Food Banks Association of Canada that now a record smashing 25% of Canadians live in poverty after nine years of his taxes, his deficits, and his doubling housing costs. Why is he going ahead with the same economics that caused the poverty in order to solve it? talks about affordability, but he's standing against raising taxes on the wealthiest so we can give uh, more supports to those who actually need it. It's been nine years of this Prime Minister promising a trickle-down economics, that if he just takes money away from small businesses and workers, it will go from one level of government to another level of government to another level of government, it will trickle down. And now, 25% of Canadians are living in poverty something he tried to cover up, just like he covered up his own data showing $25 billion of extra costs with the carbon tax, nearly $2,000 in carbon tax cover-up for every single family. How can we trust anything he says about taxes, poverty, or money? Yeah, and you know, Pierre, he hit the nail on the head with that one. You know, it's how can we trust someone when everything he said, he's either lied about or he's failed at an attempt on it, right? Like the carbon emissions, for example, hasn't hit a single one. We're still supposed to think that, you know, he'll finally hit a target. And even if he does hit one target, he's still going to be one for nine. One for nine. It's, a, it's like the Leafs record in game sevens like, or in playoff series. You think that's a good record? I don't. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, you got to have a good percentage. You can't just, well, we did it once. We have, you failed nine times. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just, it's not a good record. And he's trying to spin it around. Like, oh, no, we're hitting our, our, our tax, our emissions goal. And we need to keep raising taxes so that we can fight the climate. And it's all a bunch of horseshit. Taxing Canadians is going to make, taxing Canadians into poverty is going to actually be worse for the environment because less people are going to care. And I've explained this before, and Jordan Peterson said it perfectly. You know, if you have a poor society... People are going to be worried about their own issues, not the climate, not the future of the planet. They're worried about their own future, right? So, and again, like 25% poverty rate here in Canada. And for Trudeau to not, you know, acknowledge that or to not take uh, any responsibility for that is crazy. He's been in charge for nine years and he's done nothing to help the middle class. He's only done things to hurt the middle class because he's evil and he's trying to destroy that class of people. And again, not saying that Pierre Polyev is going to be the savior and come and can't come in the, to the, to come into office and then fix everything. I don't think he's going to do that. He's not going to restore the housing market to where it was 15 years ago. He's just going to stop the bleeding, hopefully. But it's going to be a while. And financially, from a financial standpoint, I think we'll be better under Pierre Polyev. But, you know, it's just... It's hard to trust politicians in general, right? It's not like, oh, I have a hard time tr trusting Justin Trudeau. Well, of course you would. And yeah, okay, you might want to give Pierre Polyev a chance, but we've given conservatives chances in the past too. And let's be honest, things have been getting worse since the 80s in terms of the, f the quality of our food, the quality of our mental health, the housing market. It's all been going up. 
right? And, and let's not forget who bailed out the bankers in 2009. That was Stephen Harper and Barack Obama. Well, well liberals and conservatives have a lot of similarities, don't they? Right? They're both pro-war. They're both pro. They're both pro-establishment. They both bail out bankers when they should have been put in jail for committing mass fraud. They're just different in terms of like social issues and maybe their demeanor, right? Like Trump and Biden, right? Like they're both establishment. They both hate each other so much, but they literally just made a deal together to, they, they basically got together and told CNN not to include Robert Kennedy Jr. So Trump loves America so much, but he doesn't want America to hear a voice of a strong candidate. Okay. Yeah. And I said it before, if he does that, I'm done with him and I am done with him. If Robert Kennedy drops out, I'm supporting nobody. So there you go, Trump. And again, I don't get a vote. I'm Canadian, but that was a stupid thing for him to do to say that all oh, the the Biden crime family and the Democrats are so corrupt. Then why would you work with them? Because you're scared of Robert Kennedy, just like Joe Biden is. And when you guys get scared, you you want to work together, even though the other side apparently is so evil, right, Trump? He, he's full of shit. But either way, I'm I'm done with him. And I'm certainly done with the Liberal Party of Canada, especially when you consider that even their own former ministers call them socialists. You'll never hear a current minister call them socialists well, because they get removed. Right? If you're a, a Trudeau liberal, you're like, you drank the Kool-Aid. Right? You're essentially in a cult at this point, right? Like, they just, you're going to believe everything he says. And if you don't, you better pretend that you do or else you're out of here. But his former MPs, he's not their boss anymore. And they're, none of them like him. Ask the, the women he fired if they like him. Yeah, probably not, right? So again, I mean, Trudeau has just done nothing but to hurt the country. Pierre Polyev continues to expose him, and I enjoy it. Don't trust him, but I will be voting for him to give him a chance to see if maybe, you know, he can kind of turn things around and not only help Canada escape this nightmare that we're in, but also show, hey, this new wave of conservatives is a little bit different. He's got the chance to do that. Will he? I don't think so. But... Here's to hoping, I guess. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. I'll definitely be back shortly with another one. And uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really, really helps the channel. And definitely leave me, leave me your opinions in the comments because I always enjoy reading them. And I respond to as many as I can. So thanks again, guys, so much for watching. And I'll be back shortly.